Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Takeaway. Today we're joined by Colin Bird, Executive Chairman of Extract Resources. Welcome back, Colin. How's things? Uh, Good, thank you. Very good. And how are you? Yeah, well, good. Today we saw the announcement of the completion of the interim mining study by Optimal Mining to examine the economics of a 20 million and 25 million tonne per annum open pit operation on Bush Ranger Copper Gold project in New South Wales. It seems that this project has the potential to generate substantial cash operating margins. Is that a fair summation, Colin? That's, that's a fair summation, yeah. And um, you might ask me, Phil, why, why interim? You know, why don't you come out with the MPVs, your sensitivities, your, your IRs, and um, all of those good things? But um, we thought, in the actual fact, the, the conclusion of the independent group who were, who were doing this exercise, you know, optimal mining situations, uh, solutions, they were of the opinion, uh, having looked at the kind of the population of porphyries around the world, that um, pre-concentration could add a lot of value to our project. And so we produced this interim report, or they produced this interim report, and we're doing an RNS on it to sort of demonstrate which the way the company's thinking and the way their the outside consultants are thinking. And of course, the way we're thinking is the direction, general direction of, of the project. So in, in essence, I think it's come out right through that uh, pyrotite seems to be controlled in mineralization there and the tapiranotite is generally magnetic and they they feel and we feel that um, the ability to actually concentrate pre-concentrate would add a lot to the project they're, they're, they're saying up to 20 yeah. percent whether that's the case or not i don't know but it's not just the percentage that you you recover and the grade uh, increase it's actually the obviously the footprint of the front end of the process plant will get bigger but everything else will be affected the infrastructure will be affected and will be smaller and it goes into tailing dams it goes into all aspects of the of the infrastructure just for listeners colin j- just to, for layman's terms can you explain this kind of pre-concentration um process well, that's right. Well, if, if you know, if you if you crush, grind, and float everything, what comes out the pits or in the underground mine, you know, it it really can be very wasteful. When a lot of it is, they call it gang, i.e., no pay, no contribution to make to the positive economics, but you've still got to treat it, and it still goes in circuit. So if you can get your subject, your all, you know, you run a mine ore and actually crush it to a certain level and then physically remove a lot of the non-pay material, the, you will basically increase the grade, you'll get rid of the waste material, which was no use to you anyway, and the material that goes to the chemicals, to the, all of the expensive stuff, is this kind of the grade, the grade is higher and the amount of it is lower. So you, then you basically they reduce the size of the end circuit. So, so it's exactly as it says, you are sorting the good from the bad, pre-sorting at the start of the process, instead of taking the bad stuff through the process and spending an endless amount of money on treating something which was no good in the first place. And that's, I guess, in layman's terms, that's probably the best way of putting it. And um, this would appear, our subject would appear to be suitable for that that type of technology. And pre-concentration over the last 10 years has come on a pace. And there are quite a few examples around the world where this is happening. You know, on a comparable project, we say that uh, pre-concentration retained 87% of the contained metal and reduced the amount of material to be concentrated by 50%. So think about that. You didn't lose much metal, but you actually reduced the amount of material that you're going to put through the final circuit. You, re- you reduced it to half. What are you doing then? You're concentrating the copper then to, you know, 0.6 to 1% then in the in the material that's actually going through the process? That's an awfully big forecast. And there's a, there's a kind of a, a grade relationship. It's, and it's not necessarily linear. So it's, you know, there's a bit, yeah, quite yeah. a bit of science involved in here. We'll be talking about a subject, you know, of about 0.33 there. And um, what you take it to, 0.45, 0.5, I don't know. And it would be unfair to forecast. What the recovery of that is, mm. is not, not, you know, it might not be 87%, you know. What you re- yeah. reduce the fi- final material to be sent to concentrator, I don't know. And that's why, of course, we sent, um, we've selected core and that's all been sent off. And we're actually started the pre-concentration trials. They're um, commissioned and um, 
they will be the results that we use in the produce the final report on the on the viability uh, of this project. So, Colin, I think what's on everybody's mind, obviously, is is this viable project or or not? I suppose I, mean, I know that's a very very difficult question to ask. But what what are your thoughts on it? Give us your ideas. Well, is it viable? I think the the, the key question there is. Well, the, an- the initial answer is that this is an interim port- report. So I'll give you a- an initial answer is that it generates good cash flow. But the question of um, viable, do you get a bit more income than an expenditure? It um, generates very good cash flow. But of course, um, that's what life's not all about. Is the return on an investment worth the risk? What's the net present value of the project, et cetera, and et cetera. You know, the, the information the research analysts um, work on, and of course, everybody works on the, re- the return on your money. So it became obvious as we did the study that we the whilst we're generating very good cash flows, whether or not that's viable, I don't know, because we've got to, you know, finalize the capex and everything what i do know is and what we all know is that the uplift and the improvement in financial figures can be quite quite significant more than can be very significant if pre-concentration works and um, so to to actually finalize the project now when there was an unknown wasn't sensible so i've not answered your question in detail because we've decided not to take it to final mpv and sensitivity but to do this stage of test work before we actually complete the model but what i can say with certainty kevin is um it generates a stack of cash flow um as the obviously as the copper price goes up it generates lots more cash flow we're highly in encouraged the motivated to do this pre-concentration test work okay so my analogy is more that there is uh, one vital piece of this jigsaw missing and it needs to be completed to get a full picture would that be fair that would be absolutely fair and uh, again and there'll be optimization after that kevin it means you're going to frame your jigsaw <laughs> what it means is that's that circle that's yeah the that circle now is is pretty round. That's what it says. Okay. Once we have the pre concentration okay. work work ava- uh, the concentration results available to us. Basically, we're improving the financials of the project by uh, by this pre concentration, and it is necessary. And also, this will obviously depending on the uh, the test results from the concentrations uh, improve the financials of this whole project well well that's right when you say, you know it's an absolute necessity to do it as you say it will impact on every aspect of the operation it will impact on the capital cost it will impact on, well it will impact on the flow sheet which by necessity will um, impact on the final process design which will impact on the capital cost it will impact on the operating cost, impact on the size of the tailings dam, the electrical cost, and the number of people employed. Just about every single of the aspect of the operation will be be affected, and there'll be a, ma- a massive um, capex improvement, and um, the operating cost. Of course, you treat if you're treating that sort of figure that I quoted half the material, then of course um, that impact, impacts quite seriously on the on the unit operating costs. So there'll be a massive impact, what that does to the MPV, because you know, every, just about every figure you talk about will be rejigged. What that does to the um, MPV, I know not. The return on capital employed, I know not. And of course then we've got to run all the sensitivities of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I don't think we'll go any higher than 11. Copper price, obviously there are those who are saying the copper price is going to 15. If it does, so be it. Everything goes to the bottom line anyway. So, no, we feel we're making very good progress, very good progress with this um, study. And, of course, the more you study it, the more you um, you see the flaws, the warts. The more you study it, you see the benefits. This interim situation is not unusual mm-hmm. because uh, as you focus your mind, you realize you might be a bit short of info. And to, and to finish this study without doing the pre-concentration trials, knowing that over the last 10 years, pre-concentration has, has advanced the pace, uh, would not be the right way for our shareholders and would not be the right way to take the project forward. I'm just looking at uh, some examples of some uh, you know, mines that have used this uh, pre-concentration process. And there's yes. some big names in there. You've got Olympic Dam Australia that used the process of flotation to separate copper, uranium and other minerals. You've got El Teniente in Chile that used DMS to separate the copper. And obviously one very close to your heart, the Central Mine in Zambia, where they use ore sorting to separate the copper from the ore. I believe they use some kind of quite impressive technology through sensors that detect and sort the copper-rich particles based on their physical properties. And then the other one is the Escondida mine in Chile, where they use uh, flotation and DMS. So, you know, it's something that has to be done right for, for the economics of a mine. 
That's right. That's right, Phil. As usual, you've hit it right on the nose. And there's a f- fair summary, and um, you, you're fairly close to the industry nowadays, you two. But um, as you say, you mentioned some pretty big names there, and um, you know some of the biggest minds in the world. And uh, you know, it's and it's really very, very basic. Why would you put the entire subject through a process plan when, in actual fact, you can you can get the negative stuff, the, the non-contributory? Yeah material you can move it out right at the very start yeah. uh, and, and and it begs the question you know 20 years ago did you, whether you wanted to do it or not didn't matter because you couldn't you didn't know how to do it yeah. but as i said yeah. to the, at the start phil and you quite ad- admirably um quoted those examples technology has come on a pace it's one of the in terms of processing on one of the quickest moving parts of the processing industry uh, the fastest moving because um we're recognizing now you know that uh I think I said to you in a in a previous podcast, the, the average um, grade 15 years ago being worked in copper mines globally was 1.13. It is now 0.6 and dropping. But what is not dropping is the demand. So by definition, our industry yeah. has to treat these great big systems, which have got relatively low grade ore, but stacks and stacks of it. That is the description of a porphyry copper deposit. Stacks and stacks and stacks of metal, loads of ore, all low grade. So, you know, the, the mm. science by definition, the process, the science of processing by definition had to move into the ability to pre and that And that's just what we're doing. So, yeah, because yeah. one thing we're not short of, Kevin, is ore. <laughs> you know, we're over 500 million tons, as you know. For this model, we've used um, 200, 225 million, I think it is. And then, of course, um, as I say, we've got stacks of ore. So this upgrade is really going to refocus our minds and uh, refocus the study. So necessary, right time to be doing it. We've put a circle around the project of what the pit might look like. Um, and now we're getting into process refinement. I wouldn't go so far as to say optimization. That's still to come. But process refinement. We saw all of that technology starting to take place when we went to Zambia in the in the, uh, in the different plants that we went to see that uh, Jubilee have been operating in terms of concentrating the copper and then taking that solution down to Cabway and producing 99.999 whatever percentage copper through uh, electrolysis. So, yeah. Uh, we can see that the whole system, as you said, 10, 20 years ago, didn't happen that way. They crushed the ore and hopefully got copper out of it, and that was the way it worked. But now things have changed. So, um, yeah, we have to be up to date with this. And uh, I think it's it, it almost has to improve all of those factors you talked about, including the net present value, as well as all of the costs involved in going into it, because effectively you're going to be processing significantly less than you did before, or you were thinking that's of doing. Right, right. When you'd be processing um, copper instead of uh, an old load of waste. You know, if you go back 25 years ago, your only chance was, and you you know you could you could only do it on on a, on a certain size particle was hand picking you know you would have 20 guys and girls and either side of a very very slow moving copper belt and you'd be picking off the good stuff or picking off the bad stuff whichever you choose to do throwing it into a bin and that was the only upgrading you could do and then uh, there was very rough dense medium and the the industry was static for years and years and years because you know the cutoff grade for a mine was about 1.5 percent copper and you it was no big deal to put everything through the system. Not to get, not to keep repeating myself. In this day and age, those all bodies have finished, Kevin. They've finished. They've gone. And so, really, it's not what you've got to treat. It's what you've got. To, you've got to make it suitable for treatment. And that's um, that's what we're studying now. And I'd like the you know the, our audience to this um, this discussion to think of it more as a refinement. It's not optimization because there's plenty of room left for that at every aspect of this model. So. How do we feel about it? We feel that we've got 1.3 million tons of copper. We've put in um, a big portion of it through the plant, which is high grade. But don't, when our listeners look at the model, they've got to really step back because it's not just the 0.33, which is going to be upgraded to 0.45, 0.5, I don't know, even more. Even the lower grade material will all be upgraded. So, you know, it's uh, going to imply it. It's going to sort of impact on the entire study. So the, the pit in actual fact might in actual fact lift from 225 million tons, who knows, sure. because you'll bring lower grade material in. And then as well, I say, we've got the exploration potential of north, northeast and western um, to bring in more material. So yeah. it's going the right way. 
It's going pretty consistent with international uh, work, global work, which has been done. And Phil, quite rightly, uh, these were not small projects. These, these are some of the biggest yeah. mines in the world. Exactly that. So, well, we uh, look forward to, um, you know, welcoming you back on as you aim to finalise your ongoing plans for the Bush Ranger project. Thanks again for your time, Colin. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your contribution, both of you. I, you know, and I think that those mines, they, those examples you brought out, very good, Phil, because, you know, that really does sum it all up, doesn't it? Indeed. The big boys are doing it and yeah. it seems to be a necessary part of today's low grade porphyries. Sure. So thank you very much again. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of The Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.